We're going on to our next presentation now, and it's by Angelo Mencarelli of Wageningen University, a very active player in the development of this type of technology. And uh, I don't know if he'll talk to it, but there's a, a very nice story happening in, in Holland with the uh, recreational fishery. Anyway, he's talking to using computer vision to evaluate size and weight of bycatch to enhance fully documented fishery. Hello, my name is Angelo Mencarelli, and I work as a research of computer vision robotics at the Wacken University and research the Netherlands. Today, I would like to present one of our projects. In this project, one of the objective is the development of a 3D camera system to classify, count, and estimate the weight by species of bycatch as a result of the fishery activity. Wageningen University and research has the mission to explore the potential of nature to improve the quality of life. In our campus, we have a group on agrofood robotics that research and develops computer vision and the agricultural robotic system for different sectors, such as open field agriculture and productive horticulture, fresh chains and food, livestock, and of course, marine. We are expert in artificial intelligence and sensing, especially spectral, machine learning, and computer vision. The introduction of the landing obligation in Europe obliged the fishing vessel to sort, store, and land all the undersized fish of the total allowable to catch species. That, and that is a major addiction task on board in the fishery catching and mixing compositional species. Fully documented fishery aims to automatically registrate all the catches by species and their quantity, making a distinction between catch over and catch under the legal minimum conservation site. Project provides the needed data and the transparency without manually sort the uh, undersized fish, store it and land it. It's what we call the transformation from a landing obligation to registration language. Consortium consists of four partners, Wageningen Marine Research, Wageningen University, Wageningen Plant Research and the Dutch Fishery Union Business. The project is founded by Rubino Maratmai and Fishery Found. In this project, one of the purpose is the development of automatic detection system that is able to acquire images of the discard and classify the counts of the different species separating fish from the debris and estimate the weights of the discard by species. On the left side, you can see the digital design of the 3D camera system that has to be mounted at the end of the conveyor belt in the working area of the fish vessel. The system is equipped with a real sense camera that can capture color images and depth images using the stereo cameras. Actually, we are using an industrial version of films. On the right side, the inner side of the 3D camera with uh, the Framos and with the setup illumination that provide uh, the fuse light. The basic concept is to acquire color and depth images of the discard together with the debris to segment the fishes using depth learning and classify them, count and compute the volume of the fishes, estimate the weight. To test and acquire the images from the, for the annotation and training of the deep learning framework, we mounted the camera on a mobile conveyor belt that simulated the conveyor belt of the vessel. And we went several times in fish addictions and we acquired images of fresh discard debris. After acquisition, we manually separated the fish from the debris and we weighed them. Using the color images, a YOLO network identifies and classifies the fishes and counted them. Here are a couple of examples of the preliminary result of the classification and counting process using the images of the onshore acquisition. Uh, using the distant segmentation of the color images, the depth images are segmented by a Yolart network, and the volume of each fish is computed and weighed the way it's estimated. Here again, an example preliminary result of the instant segmentation and the volume computation process. On the top left, uh, the color image, and the right, the depth image and the bottom left, uh, the uh, results of the instant segmentation and the right, the segmented depth image in false color. From December 2020, we mounted 
three times the uh, T system on vessels for mechanical stress test, functional test, and image acquisition during fishing activities. Two times for one week and once for 10 days. Here uh, in the images, you see uh, um, the, the system mounted to the end of the conveyor belt in the working area of the vessel. Here, a couple of examples of the preliminary result of the classification and counting process using images on, from the onboard acquisition. Uh, although the preliminary result of the onshore and onboard tests were positive, more tests and training have to be performed in the next year and out. The system has to be integrated into onboard fishery management. There are also other features that can be very interesting from the scientific point of view that can be computed, Empty Grazia de Fishland. And the system can be used to semi automatize the uh, working process, reducing the time that the life discard is out of the water. And with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, it's interesting to me that you're dealing with um, a very controlled environment there, but also fish which are covered in debris, mud, very difficult, often piled up. So you have uh, a number of stories to tell. I wonder if you've got any um, any stories about the design of the overhead unit and how you've tried to overcome, you know, distance problems when you're trying to use stereo cameras, problems of keeping the the, the plate clean, any of those stories, or or any um, cross fertilization because I know that uh, Wachinen has a number of fingers in a number of pies when it comes to developing these technologies. And I wondered if you could give us some insights into how your team's working and overcoming problems across projects. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, I'm lucky because uh, I am more robotician. So in principle, when we can solve some problem, um, say something uh, mechanical we do with that so that is the idea behind of this, this system um, uh, one of the base problem that you have in the deep learning in the certainty is the quality of image so what we have usually in uh, the open field of robotics for plant research as the group that come we try to um, uh, let me say uh, to protect the environment so First idea was to make a tunnel like we do usually for the post harvesting or for another situation also in open field to have a diffuse light to have no influence of the variation of the light first. Second, of course, uh, you know, the problem uh, of monitoring uh, of the catching in the boat got also against some feeling that the fisherman has uh, about the fact that they are in, in the view, so they feel themselves, let me say, observed. So we were uh, directly with the idea, okay, we want just to see the fish. So we put something on the conveyor belt. And so nobody is in, in the view, only the fish. And for us, it's actually the best option because we are just working in the field of view of the camera with what we have and the thought. The third point is um, actually, um, the system, we tested the system, uh, we say three times, the last time for 10 days without cleaning the camera. Um, the, the camera uh, has uh, uh, little spots, but we have also software to detect the spots. So we know in the moment that the, in some points of the uh, field of view of the camera, this is a spot or the, uh, uh, signal sent that that area is, is blurred. So it has to be cleaned. And we have also in mind to make this system automatic. Um, you say, uh, let's just stretch in the problem a little bit. Uh, here, the, actually, the main problem, and I think that is the problem that everybody shall have in this situation, is the illumination and not really the camera. Because you see, we have a very cheap camera in principle. Um, so the illumination is the most difficult part. And it's also the most expensive, actually. If you think that the whole system, the most expensive part is the illumination, purely for the scene. It's really a big issue. And um, the last and not least uh, is the fact that we are using a, okay, a real sense camera, but we are using in a special way, 
course, we use also the dip image for the volume calculation. But actually, we, we uh, manipulate the software uh, to um, not use, uh, let me say, what you have usually a matrix image, but a line scan image. So we use just 20 uh, uh, lines of the image we have plugged together. And we have a very big image to, uh, uh, let me say, uh, detect the large fish. Let me say. And of course, also to avoid the problem of um, the pinhole effect of the camera. So we don't want to have uh, some deformation. So if you have this image, made in sort of line scan, you have always the same, let me say, uh, optical X, uh, view of the, the image. And you have, let me say, easier uh, for some things, the easier image for something else uh, uh, less, but uh, is in principle uh, something that you can always have in the same condition. And that was what we want. I hope that I, no, it's, it's, I will be clear enough. It is very clear and it's nice to get those insights because you know I think when people think about the problems that you're dealing with, you start to hear threads between you and the Dong about how illumination is, is such a challenge. And I don't think that would necessarily come to the first people's minds about what type of questions we could share amongst each other. So that's great. I'm gonna pass you to Matt though, Angela. Yeah. I'm sure Matt has some questions. He's trying to design systems with equally you know, capture size and so on, and then start cameras rolling. So Matt, have you got any questions, please, for Andrew? Yeah, great presentation, Andrew. I really enjoyed that. And uh, um, uh, 3D and depth imagery is something that I, I've worked on for quite a long time, uh, as I mentioned yesterday. Um, did, you, did you think about using uh, other frequencies that are available? Because something that I've, I've found out is that um, because the, the IR spectrum isn't so visible underwater, uh, species haven't evolved to uh, kind of have traits that, uh, that some of the IR traits are more vivid, in fact, than the, the available wavelengths down at the blue end of the spectrum underwater. So sometimes you can find in, in certain species, they have really high characteristics to, yes. to detect them. And uh, one option as well is filtering out visible light altogether using an illuminator with a specific wavelength with a filter on it so you have a totally pure um well not totally pure it's because it never is but that you you thin down the the illumination do you, do you explore any of those options at all yeah we also plotted for uh, other uh, let me say projects uh, actually uh, this project is of course finalized to uh, make this uh, let me say uh this food of meta fishery for, let me say, a system that is uh, possible to mount in a boat in such a way, let me say. Of course, uh, if you are going in a spectral, so uh, you're going in infrared, you're going near, et cetera, et cetera, the uh, information that you will have are enormous, different uh, situation, and also situation where it's difficult to recognize some species because, of course, the color, the HB, in, in, in the other uh, frequencies, it will be uh, so clear to see and really also sometimes also to catch also the difference of something. We don't know exactly, I mean, say now I'm saying something that is dangerous, but you can see also fish that is healthy and not healthy for some situation. And it will be, uh, let me say the next step, really the, the point. Uh, of course, in the research uh, side, let me say you wanted to have Okay, again, the illumination, you want to have a very broad frequency for the illumination. We're going to put a retro camera and to analyze everything. Sometimes it's difficult because of course we are using a system that can be very hot on, the, on, on board. It will be, you need a dedicated, uh, let me say vessel that want to do this, this kind of things. Uh, but it will be very, very interesting because the moment that you find the, the narrow band that you need, you, you go to a booty spectral camera, it can be very cheap actually, because you can put just filters and it will be uh, and with the right frequency and the right stuff. Yes, definitely, definitely in the future, they, we have to go in that direction. Also for other stuff, uh, it's, we are talking now of fishery and discard, but it's also for automatic uh, selection and also for the discard on the addiction that you can do this kind of things and with the same concept actually. And indeed, uh, it will be very, very useful. 
And of course, another a technology that's just uh, kind of appeared over the past 10 years in, in robotics and, and cameras for robotics, uh, which is the, the domain to look into for all of this, of course, isn't yeah. it? Um, is the time of flight cameras, which use a specific wavelength single camera and produce a depth image at the same time. I mean, they're expensive, but without having two cameras, you get everything you need. Uh, and, and they're specifically designed for that job, aren't they? Which yeah, some, kind of tells us really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sometimes the problem is more the resolution actually that you have than really the application. But uh, it indeed is, it, there's a lot of technology that uh, in some uh, fields can be uh, really ported to the fishery. Mm. Of course, with the problem that we have in the fishery, that is a uh, really corrosive uh, environment and mm. very difficult. But uh, uh, let's say broadened thinking, you have a lot of things that you can do uh, really sometimes in very cheap way, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying the last thing. Usually, uh, if you are concentrated only on deep learning, and we are concentrating a lot about that, you miss a very important part. that. The, Part of the uncertainties of the deep learning are the quality of the image. If you miss this part, yeah. you can have the best system in the world, but still you have problems for uh, detecting. Uh, last, th last thing, Kim, I just want to touch on a point that Angelo uh, brought up in his presentation, which was consideration for the stakeholders. And it yeah. kind of relates, to, I, I wanted to ask Uli actually about this uh, in, in the, the, the fantastic project that, uh, that Norway is rolling out. Uh, and I think it's something that, that uh, we should think about in the forum is, you know, how, what, what are the best ways to approach stakeholders with, because we can have all this wonderful technology, but if people don't like it, uh, it's, it's not going to be adopted. And I think having a think tank about, you know, how to incentivize use of this technology, how to make it pleasant for people, not invasive and, and be empathetic, I think is, is a, yeah really important thing uh, and almost as important as the technology having meaning for the stakeholders to actually have it with them and, and not and I think uh, yeah you highlighted something really important with a very complex piece of technology there yeah. uh, okay, we're, we're going to get moving because thank Sorry, you Ken. Matt and thank you Angela for those insights that's very happy and we're going to be moving on to the Apple design for AI in the near future to make sure but obviously it's got to work you know, people like things that work. And then, then the next step is to make sure if it's working to make it palatable. So this is where we're getting to. And thank you, Angelo, for such a great um, presentation.